We're live from Perth and the show starts off with a bang. It's going to be Tiffany Stratton and Liv Morgan to kick off the women's elimination chamber. And waiting in the wings is Naomi, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair and the woman who was a last minute entrant in the last chance battle royal on Raw, Jade Cargill. But she has to wait because in the ring Stratton comes out strong and puts Liv down right away and immediately gets a close two count. Liv gets tossed to the outside onto the steel and it isn't looking good, but Liv manages to fight back and she uses the strikes the right way. But before we know it, it's time for entrant number three and it's Naomi. And she comes in absolutely on fire. She nails Stratton with a rear view and then downs Liv on the outside and then starts to climb. Liv slowly gets to her feet and Naomi leaps off, collecting her and wiping her out before it's now time for number four, and it's Bianca Belair. She hits the match with the same fire as Naomi and seems to specifically target her as well. She manages to get Naomi down and she doesn't want to be upstaged by her dive, so she goes to the top rope, but that isn't enough. She goes up again and now she's on top of the pod. But before she can jump, Stratton sees her and she scales to the top rope and throws her off. Bianca crashes and burns, and the crowd are on their feet. And it's got to be now time for the second last competitor to enter, and it's one of the favourites. Cargill is in, and she manages to plant her with a big boot to the head, pick her up, and land jaded for the first elimination. Naomi is gone, and Cargill makes a huge impact, and she carries on dismantling everyone until we get another meeting between one of the biggest stars in the women's division and a woman who wants that crown, when Jade and Bianca are face to face. And they're about to go, but they get broken up by Liv and Tiffany, and we are starved of that confrontation once again. Tiffany gets Bianca down, and she scales to the top rope, and she nails Bianca with it. But before she can make the cover, she gets blindsided by Liv Morgan, who manages to hit Oblivion, and it's all over for Stratton. But it's just beginning for the final entrant, and one of the favourites, Becky Lynch. But as Becky is getting ready to get into the battle, the battle comes to her, because Liv is ready to go, and they get straight into it. They're embroiled in a wild tussle, but Becky turns the tide. She's so committed, she's so driven, and she drives Liv through the glass. Both women are broken, and Becky drags her out. She manages to get the cover, and Liv Morgan is done, which leaves three left standing. But two of those are standing in the ring face to face. And it's finally time for Cargill and Bianca to start trading. And the crowd lifts in Perth. They're with it every step of the way. It feels like a real moment, and Bianca, picks Jade up, looking for a KOD, but she escapes. Jade looks for Jaded, but Bianca escapes. But she cannot escape a massive knee from Jade. But you've got to have eyes in the back of your head, because here comes Becky and learns a manhandle slam on Jade. Bianca though, she comes through, wipes out Becky over the top rope, and now she wants to take the opportunity herself. She picks Jade up and sends her face first with a KOD for the huge elimination. It took two finishes to get her out of there, but she has no time to settle because Becky is back and the match is down to two. The two favorites for the win and they're juking it out with barely anything left. They fight all over the demonic structure, trying everything they can to wear each other down. But Becky has Bianca in a compromising spot. She has her on her shoulder, but Bianca grabs the chain link and starts climbing. She climbs all the way over to the top of the pod, but Becky scrambles up. She tries to throw her off, but Becky gets countered, and Becky crashes to the mat. She leaps off, but Becky moves. Bianca crashes and burns again, and Becky picks her up, plants her with a manhandle slam, and she wins it. She earns a shot at the winner of Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax, which is up later. But also later is the Grayson Waller effect with Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. And we see Cody and Seth both arriving at the arena as the excitement builds. But the Australian crowd comes alive again for another reason. Because Big Bronson Reed walks past Cody and right into the face of Adam Pearce 
and he demands a spot on the show. And Pierce says, you had your chance, Bronson. There's nothing we can do. Bobby Lashley beat you. It's as simple as that. I wish there was something I could do, but the card's full. And Bronson Reed says, well, I guess I'm going to have to do it the hard way, aren't I? He storms off. But what does he mean? What kind of chaos is he going to create? Well, we're going to have to find out later. But the chaos continues when Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne come out to face Judgment Day for the Tag Team Championships. And it's as impressive as you'd think. Bate and Dunne have impeccable chemistry together, as do Bella and Priest, of course, being the Tag Team Champions. But it's British Strong Style that gets on top and causes some panic amongst the Judgment Day. And of course, that's always going to bring out either Tom or Nick Mysterio. But no one can tell which one it is, but Mysterio comes out to try and interfere. But of course, wherever Tom or Nick go, the Miz won't be far away. And he stops Mysterio in his tracks with a skull-crushing finale. But while that's happening, JD McDonough appears, but as he's stalking them, he gets dropped by our truth The crowd goes berserk! But it becomes apparent the truth isn't fighting JD because he's Judgment Day, but because in his eyes, he's not. He's yelling at JD to stop trying to cost Judgment Day the match. We thought Truth got it, but he obviously doesn't. Miz then gets the ringside and he's telling Truth that he's not part of Judgment Day. They've tried beating you up for weeks, Truth. Please. But from the inside of the ring, Priest has done over his head and he throws him onto our truth Bella hits a shotgun drop, kick to Bait, goes up looking for the coup de grace, but Bait moves and now he picks up Bella and the aeroplane swing is in full effect. He clips Priest with his feet in the process. He picks up Bella now, who's disorientated, and he lands the Tyler driver. One, two, no! Priest manages to get back to break it up. But very quickly, Pete Dunn is back in the ring and he lands a bitter end on Priest. He's over, he's done, and Judgment Day might be as well. But as Dunn is about to take advantage and get the double team on Bella, he's dragged from the ring by our truth He's still confused. He hasn't learned a thing. But as this is happening, Bella rolls up bait. Bait kicks out, but he stumbles over towards the corner. Bella takes his chance, nails him with a shotgun drop kick, and then he has his chest caved in by a coup de grace. And Judgment Day retains. But immediately after, Priest grabs Miz and throws him into the ring, where he and Bella commence the beatdown. Truth is confused. For some reason, he's still conflicted. What is he going to do? Truth made his choice. He sides with the Miz and he's finally figured it out. The crowd goes crazy and it seems like we have a proper reformation of the awesome Truth, which will no doubt set up a potential WrestleMania match for the Tag Team Championships. But this, of course, isn't the only Judgment Day Championship match because shortly after, Nia Jax enters to a chorus of boos. The massive boos turn to massive cheers when the home country hero arrives. gets a huge ovation from her fellow Australians and wastes no time getting at Nia. The bell rings and the fight is on and Rhea has been decimated multiple times in the lead up but she's not having that in her own country. She's full of rage and she has the whole nation behind her. But the optimism is drained from the crowd when Nia Jax fires back and she starts to get on top and she starts to dominate just like in the lead up to the match. She punishes Rhea big time. The crowd is just in a constant chorus of boos as Nia dominates and she eats it up. She couldn't care less. But Rhea 
isn't going away that easily. Not on her home soil. The crowd rises with her and she fires up and Nia Jax can't go with her. Rhea has been worn down, but she's riding the momentum. And she has Nia in big trouble. She's calling her up to her feet and she goes to try for the Riptide, but she can't lift her. She's been worn down too much. And this lets the air out of the arena again. They're wondering, does Rhea have what it takes? It seems not, because Nia takes advantage and smashes her with a Samoan drop. Now, she grabs her and takes her over to the corner and she's gonna finish her off. But Rhea draws on the crowd, finds a way to get up and she stops her in her tracks. She has her in a compromising position in the corner and she muscles her way up to the turnbuckle and suplexes her off. It shakes the ring and the stands and then Rhea fires herself up. The whole crowd comes with her and she brings the house down. Rhea does it. She overcomes Nia Jax in her home country. The place comes unglued and Rhea gets her moment. She grasps the championship she's held for so long. And now her attention can turn towards WrestleMania, where of course her opponent is already waiting. But while their road to WrestleMania is set, the six men about to enter the Elimination Chamber are looking to pave their own. And coming out first is a huge favorite to win it. It's the AOP and they're destroying Lashley. The final testament is in the building and Paul Ellering appears on the ramp with Karrion Cross, and it looks like they're gonna take Lashley's spot from him. And the two giants take Lashley away. He's not gonna be able to compete. And we see backstage that the Street Profits have already been laid out. But Paul Ellering is confused because they didn't do it. It's Bronson Reed. The place goes berserk. Cross spins around and he gets dropped by the home country hero. Ellering gets out of there and Reed stands over Cross and Adam Pearce comes out and Reed says, I told you I would do this the hard way. Now let me in the match. And Adam Pearce looks around at the crowd. They're going crazy. They want him in the match. They have to have it. And Adam Pearce, he can't resist. He gives the okay and sends Bronson Reed into the chamber to a massive ovation. And the match can finally get underway when the rest of the field enters. And we've got LA Knight, we've got Randy Orton, we've got Kevin Owens, Logan Paul, and Drew McIntyre. And starting number one and two is two men who have been in each other's throats for weeks over the United States Championship and it gets intense quickly because Logan goes right after Owen's hand. But Owens will never stay down for someone like Logan Paul, and he fights back. He gets massive cheers from the Aussie crowd, but not only for his shirt, but the fact that he's beating the hell out of Logan Paul. And then the next participant arrives, and it's Randy Orton. One of the most dangerous sharks in the water for this match, and he goes right at Logan. And this isn't good news for Logan, who hasn't exactly made a lot of friends in the WWE. But Orton grabs him and he nails him with a signature Hangman DDT. And it's everything the Aussie fans wanted. But it's not what Kevin Owens wants, who takes Randy head on. And they go back and forth until we get the next entrance. And it's LA Knight. And he comes in on a mission. And while Kevin Owens and Randy Orton are doing battle, he takes advantage of a down Logan Paul and he starts laying the boots in and talking trash and LA says, you won't even have that US title very much longer, let alone a world title. Gold looks better on me with everybody saying. Yeah. He stomps out Logan while he's talking trash and it's been a rough time for him, but he wants to get some distance and he manages to get away from LA Knight and he climbs the cage for some solace. But then, from behind LA Knight, Owens grabs him and drops him with a stunner. And Orton grabs Owens, throwing him back towards the ring. And Owens 
without knowing it, has opened the door for Logan and he nails him with a splash. But the next man in is looking to do the same and the crowd goes nuts because it's big Bronson Reed. And as he's coming in, Logan tosses Knight in the ring and he wants to hit one more move to eliminate him. But Knight is having none of it. He counters and lands a blunt force trauma on Logan. But once again, Knight is cut off because Orton throws Knight out of the ring and waiting on top of the pod is Bronson Reed. He gets the first elimination and Logan Paul is gone, much to the delight of the crowd. But Owens goes right in, gets after Bronson Reed, while Knight and Orton are still embroiled on a war outside the ring. And then it's time for the final and arguably most dangerous entrant. McIntyre enters the match like a hurricane and he wipes out every single person in his path. He tears it apart. And as he runs around ringside, he spots Reed and he looks for a Claymore. But Reed moves and Drew smashes Owens. And Owens is eliminated in the most brutal fashion. The crowd can't believe it. But then Reed grabs McIntyre, tosses him in the ring, and he wants to try and get rid of him now. He muscles up McIntyre and plants him with a spinning powerbomb. And then goes up. He's going to look for another tsunami. But when he leaps off, boom! Out of nowhere, Randy lands an RKO, and no one can believe it. Reed is gone. The shattered crowd can't believe what they've just seen. Which leaves three men left standing. It's Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, and L.A. Knight. Orton strikes first, looks for an RKO at Drew, but he reverses. L.A. looks for a blunt force trauma on Randy, but he reverses that. Drew then throws Randy out of the ring and onto the steel. But as Drew turns around, he does get hit with a blunt force trauma. And LA Knight leaps into the cover right away. One, two, no. Drew kicks out. He's hanging on by a thread. And LA Knight is going to stalk him for another BFT. But once again, from out of nowhere, he gets blindsided by an RKO. The Viper strikes, and in the blink of an eye, LA Knight is gone, and we are down to two. But with Drew still reeling, he looks for the RKO, but Drew counters, but Orton sets him up in the ropes. And in classic Orton style, he hits him with a hangman DDT. And the crowd rises up, they can feel the end. Orton's stalking him, this is it. He tries for it once again, but Drew reverses, and lands a Glasgow kiss, and Orton stumbles to the outside and he stumbles over towards the pod. Drew runs at Orton and Claymore's him through the plexiglass. It's absolutely brutal. Drew ruthlessly drags Orton through the broken glass and pins him. He wins the Elimination Chamber and the Scottish Warrior has torn his way through WWE and he has one man left to accomplish his goal. Well, I guess Seth has just ruined my introduction, huh? But who cares? Nothing is gonna ruin this moment. I'm home, baby! But listen, listen, Seth. I know you're already out here, so come on down. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the biggest ever Grayson Waller effect in history. Come on, Seth, hobble down here. Anyway, while we're waiting for this idiot to make his way down here, let me introduce to you my other guest, the 2023 and 2024 Royal Rumble winner, the man who lets everyone down by never finishing the bloody story, Cody Rhodes. Wrestling has been a Yeah, 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 we get it. Cool song. Come on, get in here, Cody. Get in here. We don't want to hear that anymore. And let's get to talking about what the people really want to hear about, okay? 
And that's Roman Reigns. Oh, we don't like him here. Well, how about this one? Listen up, listen up. How about our boss, The Rock? Thought so. But hey, listen, Seth, first questions to you, mate. What makes you think you'd make a good shield for Cody anyway? You're on one leg, you've got barely anything left, and you've defended that title heaps. Listen, well done. But mate, you're cooked. And Seth says, <laughs> ah, Grayson, my friend, you have no idea. I'm going to be 110% by WrestleMania to stomp Drew McIntyre's big stupid head into the mat. And I'm healthy enough right now to stomp yours as well. But Waller calms it down and says, whoa, whoa, mate, chill out. Chill out. I'm just here asking what the people want to know. Like Cody, what makes you think, now that Seth is out here, that anything's going to be different from last year? You've got Roman Reigns and The Rock. The two-headed, bloodline final boss is waiting and you think that you can step up to the Tribal Chief and go one better. Please, enlighten us all. What's going to be different? Cody very defiantly replies, because Grayson, I have to. And listen, I know there's people, much like yourself, who doubt me. But believe me, I've doubted myself a lot too. But one thing the press conference in Las Vegas showed me is that I'm not flinching. I'm not going anywhere. And I sought counsel from The Rock, and I did what at the time I felt was right. But now, this is the most right I've ever been. So to answer your question, I will go one better in Philadelphia because I have to. And with Seth Rollins by my side, I will bring their family down. Because wrestling has more than one royal family. The crowd loves it. Cody is banging the drum ahead of WrestleMania, but Waller then says, mate, that's great. Very emotional, very touching. But as I said, The Rock is my boss and he's given me a directive. Well, actually, us a directive. Austin Theory is here now and he slides in the ring and goes after Seth and Waller goes after Cody and the brawl is on. It was definitely a planned hit, orchestrated by Roman Reigns and The Rock. However, it backfires because Cody hits a crossroads on Waller. He dispatches him, but Rollins isn't faring as well. He's struggling with his knee and Rhodes is there this time to be his shield. Rhodes dispatches Theory, but then we see on the Tron, it's The Rock and Roman Reigns. The Rock says, Cody, Seth, I hope the weather is nice in Perth. And for all the Cody crybabies that wanted us to show up, there ain't no way The Rock or Roman Reigns would want to fly all the way there. But boys, you should know us better than this. And Roman takes over and says, that's right, you should. And Seth, this is a saying that you will remember. There's always a plan B. Solo is there, he sneaks in the ring, and he drops Rollins. He then grabs Cody, and he has a spike for him. Solo decimates both men, throwing them all over ringside, even putting Cody through the announce table. And he stomps all over Seth Rollins' knee, all while The Rock and Roman Reigns watch on. Seth Rollins has the Scottish warrior on his tail. The bloodline is stronger than ever and all roads lead to WrestleMania.